Hello everyone, this is Baxter, and I've always wanted to do an unboxing video, and I've always talked myself out of it, not thinking I had the right equipment, not thinking I had the right subject matter, but I do love technology, and I also wanted to expose that you don't need a lot to kind of share your passion, so I wanted to introduce you to my makeshift studio here, sitting at essentially a dining room table, and I want to review and go through an unboxing of the iPhone 14 Pro. That's the new phone that I purchased to replace this, which is my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now, you'll see I'm using Rode mics, which we could always go into, and you can see I have my iPad 12 inch Pro, as well as some basic lights that I could point to in the description. And I'm also gonna try to do this in another way. I'm gonna try to do it unfiltered, unedited, in terms of just giving you the straight story. Now in post, I will have to sync this audio, which I'm capturing both here and here with the two microphones that come with the wireless, uh, the Rode Wireless Go 2. And I hope that this will also encourage you that you don't have to be perfect. Um, I'm just gonna try to go messy. I'm gonna try to go fast. I'm gonna try to give you details. I'm gonna try to give you an experience. And in hopes of doing that, I wanna spur you on to do your own good work on YouTube or other places. You could also check out my podcast where I talk a little bit more about being messy and you'll find all of that in the description below. Now as a bonus, I'm also going to review the unboxing and review of the new, I, the new Apple Watch, <laughs> the new Apple Watch 8, which I also picked up, but I'm gonna separate that into a separate video. So now that you've been properly prepped and if you're just jumping ahead to this point, which I'll give you that option, um, we'll go ahead and get started. So this is the new iPhone Pro 14 Pro. I got it in purple, my favorite color. And so let's go ahead and go through it. You'll notice first that in this unboxing that there are the two strip aways that you can pull away. Um, Apple has gone through great efforts to reduce their footprint um, uh, to be more ecologically uh, sensitive, um, environmentally sensitive. So with that, um, we'll go ahead and just pull those two tabs. You can hear that light rip. And there we go with that. And so here you can see that, and I'll have to blur when I point to this side of the screen. So forgive me, but I'll try to block this information so you can see where I pulled those two tabs. Uh, go ahead and flipping it over. Definitely still has a lot of weight to it per, compared to phones in the past. Um, and it just slips off. It used to have this nice little pop as you pull things off, but this this still has a little bit of, of resistance as you pull it off, but definitely much easier to just pull off. It, it's going a little bit back in that open box experience, but still not incredibly um, uh, just cheap feeling. And so at, there it is uh, inside this box. Um, I don't feel any of that plastic that used to be on the whole uh, element, the whole phone, like it felt like it used to be. Uh, there's an easy tab to lift out, and it is just that raw phone. Now they have this paper. It used to be this film that used to kind of come off completely, but now it's just uh, paper, which is fine, definitely into paper products. But there, you can see that the rest of it is exposed. Um, I'll take, go ahead and take this off of my old phone. This is not gonna fit anyway, so this will be available for somebody else to use. I liked it because it had that MagSafe in here. Uh, but we'll go ahead and find a replacement for that at some point. And what I wanted to do before I do anything else or go further is kind of bring out some of these other phones. Uh, some have been damaged, as you can see, that I still need to turn into Apple so that they could recycle it properly, which I encourage you to do as well. Um, but go ahead and um, line these up in, I think, order that they came out. This is the iPhone 8, and you can see they had the, uh, the old lens style here rather than the protruding three versions. And you could even see that these pop out way more than in the uh, 12 Pro Max. In this one, it's, I don't even remember the resolution. The flash was here, the recording um, or sensors are right between. 
uh, that may be a microphone as well. I have forgotten. Uh, here it's at the bottom, a microphone. This is the XR in the product red, and this is the iPhone SE first generation. You can see the camera flushed, which is nice, versus these protruding ones, and then the flash, which is elongated, versus the circle. And then finally, you go to much bigger flashes in the newer phones. You can even see in the details, you can see how there's some more yellow dye, um, yellow LEDs versus the white one. So I'm getting a sense that this is going to be much brighter. And then of course, as I said, you have much bigger lenses in comparison. Uh, if I put those more side by side. And they also protrude out much more significantly. So I don't know if you could see that. So that's something that'll be interesting. Of course, you know about the 48 millimeter um, lens that is now the prime lens. And if you're going to be shooting any films or videos, um, you're certainly going to want to rely on that and then zoom in or out using actual fitted lenses versus using the camera ones because the highest quality lens is going to be that main camera. I'm shooting from my MacBook Pro and you can see that there's going to be a quality difference. So when I intercut the images from the iPad versus the Mac Pro versus these cameras, which we'll get to see, you'll be able to start comparing those differences. And I'll try to limit any sort of post-production on the actual shots besides maybe a little bit of cropping. So as you can see, this is already beginning to be a slightly different video that maybe you've seen for unboxing, but we'll put those chapter marks in there so that you can jump around to the parts that specifically you're interested in. Let's get on with it, shall we? So you can see also from the size, the iPhone 8 was much bigger in size than the uh, XR. Let's compare that with the uh, Pro. Let's get them kind of in order. For, so from a size in your hand, and I have fairly big hands, you know, it's, it's, I could get this thumb across here pretty easily, up and down, depending on how I'm holding it. Um, the same probably is true here, but you can see you're getting much more edge-to-edge -edge screen on the XR, and then you get that limited. So while you get a bigger screen, you have a bigger uh, profile on the entire phone that you're holding in hand. But yet, for my big hand and thumb, I can still get across here and there. But then this one with also that edge to edge, you're getting that much bigger screen, edge to edge. Um, you can see this one is turned on. But part of the problem I always had is being able to stretch my finger when I'm typing, because right here, you, know, as you can see it's a little bit chunky here. And so getting it across was a little bit much. And although I jo enjoyed that bigger screen size when watching things, I was definitely interested in when it became the time to go back and you can see that. Um, to a much smaller footprint where I could easily get my hand pretty much anywhere on the screen without having to switch hands, hold it, or stretch. So that is the exit. Thank you, SE, for your service. Thank you, iPhone 8, for your service. Thank you, XR, for your service. This is not just my phones. This is, I have a family, and they all were giving me their phones as they went on to do their own updates to their various models. So. Let's get to the direct comparison. Again, we'll save the reveal of this screen, but just to let you know, like this phone is sitting much higher because of that fat lens on the bottom side, right? So as I run my hand, you can see I run into it right here because of this lip, because it's sitting much higher. And that was one of the complaints uh, for the iPhone 13 Pro that they were hoping would be fixed. It, it, it has not been, so it, it, it still can kind of wobble. I don't know why you would have your phone on a table doing this, but you know that's something to consider. Probably a lot of that will go away when I get a, an appropriate uh, screen protector like this one. And, and we could even see this one is, sits much flat. It's not raised up. And then this only helped even it out. So um, I, I assume it's necessary that Apple had to go that direction, but so be it. Another reason why you might be wondering, why do I have two microphones and why this one? I could have hidden it under my shirt, but I didn't want to do that because I wanted to make sure I had clean audio. This is a backup. And so something whenever you're doing production, if you can get something like the Wireless Pro, um, the Wireless Go 2, then you're going to be able to make sure you have that safety that it's capturing audio here and here. This might also be a little bit far away, so I might tweak it. And then if you're ever going to be doing a long form video, you should just definitely have water, right? As you can see, the Apple Watch is off here to the side, but we will get to that in another video. Continuing back to the phone. Now, let's go ahead and peel this off. I like how they tell you 
This is where your silence is. This is your plus and minus for the volume. So it's right here. And then of course your power button. So if you were to ever not have this, and if you're new to the iPhone switching from maybe another phone manufacturer or having one of these older ones, you may want to know where that power button is. And it's going to be on the right side of the device with the screen facing you. They also show you the one with the power at the bottom. So that's something to be considered. We'll take it off gently just in case we need to do a reshoot. And you can see that inside is that sticky film, not sticky, I should say, but that clingy film that is on the inside to attach here appropriately. So again, I might need that from a production standpoint to reshoot that part. So I'm going to make sure I keep it clean off to the side. Going to back what going to what's in the box, you know now, now that iPhones no longer hold the chargers inside. So you lift this up, you get a nice little card. There's some information about Bluetooth, a sticker, which I have a lot of these. I can't put it on everything. Thank you, Apple, but can't do it. Um, and I'm going to stick that back in here. So this is probably just a nice to have again, much lower footprint, all recyclable. And then you only get the charger now, which they're still doing the lightning charger, which is probably going to change next year. Um, and the 15 is my guess because uh, the European Union has mandated that every device, electronic device, supports USB-C. There would not be two reasons, or that there would not be a reason to have two different charge ports on a phone. So this will likely become USB-C. So this may be the last of the lightning chargers. Um, and I would presume that USB-C charges faster. I've noticed that on my iPad Pro, which uses a UB USB. B, C, um, to go ahead and, and plug that in and compare kind of charging, I, I felt like compared to my older iPad, it was much faster. So I, there's something to be said, but who knows? Um, you don't get the block is what I was specifically saying. You do get the charging cable. So this is where Apple's made the move to continue to keep the price point pretty much the same across these different models. It's got to come from somewhere, especially with inflation and everything else. That is in removing the block there justification, which they mentioned a couple of years ago, is that we have had so many blocks sold that more than likely people have plenty of them, but they still reduce this charge. They still include this charger, which we probably also have plenty of, but I don't think that would be a great sales uh, marketing on their side. So assuming you have stuck with me, we're going to now get to the phone. If you are just jumping in at this point, we are at the point where we have the 12 Pro Max and the 14 Pro. Again, moving to the smaller profile because I wanted to be able to use my full hand across the device. I will say I've always liked these darker, more bold colors. So this uh, green, blue, which I forgot the name of it at the time. This one is called Deep Purple. Again, favorite color. I like it. Um, I like the smaller profile in general. Um, I think... That's going to work better for me. Slightly smaller screen I'll have to live with, but in the end, it's probably for the best. I could already tell you that from a weight standpoint, I don't know how heavy that lens is. This feels much weightier than this. This phone is much lighter, even though it's bigger, it's older, but there's some, there must be some hefty, hefty material in here to be this much heavier. And we could probably look on a website to see the actual weight difference, but you know, if you're YouTube and internet savvy, you could certainly do that. But this definitely has some weight. So while I get the smaller form factor to move around, how long I want to hold this in my hand remains to be seen, right? So as you can see, the big, big, big deal is the notch that had been in, I believe, the 11, the 12, and the 13. I'm not sure about the 11, um, but the notch has been here for a couple of generations, and they've been able to reduce that capture information primarily for uh, face ID, um, but for other reasons, right? They've been able to squeeze that in. So now we have this nice wrap around the screen that we can certainly take advantage of. And then um, it'll be interesting to see. Of course, I got to set up the phone. So I'll go ahead and as you can see, you turn it on. Uh, I do just looking at the phone really like this pill already compared uh, to, uh, to the notch. It does feel much better. After you create your face ID, you need to put in a code. You could skip that part. I just find the do setup right at the front to be the easiest way to do things. Just doing the setup immediately. I could forget about it, could use the phone. I mean, ultimately, I'm doing this too. I could use a new phone, not to uh, create unboxing videos. So I want to kind of get to it, right? 
Now it asks me if I want to uh, restore or how do I want to deal with my apps and data. So I could choose from how I want to transfer the data to this phone. Um, transfer directly from an iPhone is going to be easiest. Of course, there is move data from an Android. Don't transfer apps, uh, apps and data if you just want to use this fresh. And then, of course, from the uh, backup from the cloud or from the Mac. So I'll take a picture of that again. I'm gonna choose the phone, because why not? I'm directly here. If you didn't want to do this manually, which had a very few screens, and you just wanted to do this immediately coming from another iPhone, the easiest way to do that is going to be to just have your phone nearby. So uh, I have to make sure my phone is nearby. I have to make sure that uh, Bluetooth, and then as you can see, it says, hey, it recognizes my Apple ID, which of course is blurred out here, and it's asking me to set up my phone. I'm gonna say hit continue. Now I have to hold the phone up over that circle. It recognizes this as finished on a new iPhone, enter passcode of the old phone, which of course, again, blurred out. You gotta be private and protective of your information. So certainly do that. Uh, I have two phone numbers. I'm going to transfer those. Um, continue, transfer number, confirm transfer, yes. I now need to double click on the other phone. And so while this is blurry, you can see that I'm doing the things that it's asking me to do. Um, this business one actually hasn't been set up yet, so um, not going to be able to do that. When I talked to my carrier, I set up that other number. I didn't quite get everything set up on the old phone, so there's nothing to really transfer. But now that I have the new one, I'll be able to go ahead and do that. Now, one of the reasons I am not stopping the recording and I'm just letting it run, I'm just going to cut it out in editing, is because I am doing a sync, which I forgot to do that clap. You know how they do that clap in film so that the sound matches with the two hands coming together like that. And so you can match and sync up the audio. A lot of times nowadays there is um, software that'll sync it up automatically for you. But if you're still old school, wanted to do it manual again, I wanna show you how you can do this with what you might have. And um, certainly I could have just used the phone or the iPad and not showed the comparison. So there's a lot of different approaches. We certainly could have a dialogue about that in the comments if you wanna exchange ideas. But Again, using what I have. So look, it says that the cellular setup is complete. The phone is now active. I hit continue. I can download uh, from the iCloud. I could transfer a lot of data or I can do it from the phone. Now it says you can start using your iPhone in about 15 minutes. Your data will download later over Wi-Fi or transfer directly, transfer directly so that this iPhone will be ready with your data when you're finished setting it up. Now, it says it's going to take an hour and 30 minutes. Clearly, I do not have enough time for that. So I'm hoping that I can give you these uh, as much as you want. It's uh, setting up based on ID. I'm certainly making this video so that if you're on the fence, should I upgrade, should I not upgrade, depending on how many generations you're going back, just wanted to give you just another perspective for you to consider how you might make that decision about should you upgrade your phone or not. The screen seems brighter for sure, um, and it's heavier. I like the color more, and I'm just gonna get a clear, similar to this back so that I, I could just like show off that color. Um, but other than that, um, I could go back. I mean, you know, ultimately, you know, I, I think I'd be pretty good with this. Um, enjoy your new phone, it says, when you're ready, come back to get this iPhone ready to be traded in which I will definitely do. One thing that you may also do is take some screen grabs from the website and insert them into your video so that you can still talk and keep your audio and, and, and help the audience follow your story while also making sure that you're protecting private information or giving much more valuable insights, much more valuable information from something that they could see on the screen versus seeing kind of directly and not seeing the phone or having to blur everything because of security issues. So again, from a production standpoint, those are some things to keep in mind.